Oh, what a beachy! I did a video before one time where I showed using four scan with this thing, a J2534 uh, on the Maxisys. And, uh, well, only does Ford, but uh, I thought I would see if I could expand the use of this thing to maybe something else. So the four scan only works with Ford, but uh, as you may have seen in this channel before, I do a few Volvos and uh, we've got one in, complete with a packet of birdseed and uh, well, we're going to see what we can do with this. So we'll put a link up here in the cards for using this here with that there, Ford only. These, uh, these wee leads here, the wee toggle switch on them, from uh, the usual suspects. However, if you have one of these things, the J2534 pass-through, you don't need any hardware at all. I mean, it'll work off this. This is that J2534 pass-through, the Maxi Flash scanning on the 4Scan, and that's it done. So, Volvo software is called Vita, and uh, you can get this on a couple of websites, on the interwebs. No links, no links for this here, and it's not in the Amazon store. So, it only works on Windows 7, professional, and uh, so instead of partitioning drives on my own laptop that works on Windows 10 and all that, well, I bought another laptop on the flea bay, and there's it there. So, much was that? 44 quid. Now, what people usually do is they use this Vita with uh, the diagnostic interface, and uh, usually get the software with it, I think, and, and these are clones, basically, are probably mostly used by the home gamer and stuff like that, Volvo owners and the like. So that's a, a dice unit for use with Vita. And that just means uh, diagnostic something or other. Uh, diagnostic equipment, basically. There's, it's sort of an acronym. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like there. But, uh, well, I don't want to go out and buy this. I want to see if this Vita is going to work with this buy here and uh, well I've been mucking about with it today and uh, to see if it works and well it does. So we'll have our uh, device there plugged in to our Volvo and we'll see if this Vita is any good. So let's see now, so clearly as I explained in the Forescan, how to use Forescan with the J2534 Maxisys uh, thing there, you need to, you know, install Maxi PC Suite from Autel, and that gets the drivers of that unit into this PC here, or into this laptop, which is running Windows 7. Pro, professional, only works on professional. I don't know where I said that. Before, so we'll do a wee quick diagnostic. here and see what we get so it's able to read the vehicle and uh, partner group international Arabia and China will change that to Europe and uh, right hand drive previous vehicles that's I've already done it in this and we'll click OK and uh, what's this? so there's various tabs in this video and uh, it's not just diagnostic software, it, uh, it does actually give you, you know, workshop information and uh, all that. So there's a parts catalog, what's that, work list. I'll go into diagnostics and uh, 
So, because I've already done this here, we'll just do an update, which means it's going to scan it again. So we'll let that go. So, there we go. So it gives us quite a bit of VIN information from that, uh, from that scan there, from the VIN, you know. So uh, I'm just uh, recording this on the laptop screen, so it might be a wee bit fuzzy, but hopefully you can make it out. So it tells us all what equipment it has there. And uh, frequency remote, you know, all that. What's it, what it's fitted with and what it isn't fitted with. So I've just been playing about with this, this today and uh, just to see if it would work really, you know, on that J2534 pass-through pass device without having to buy the uh, dice unit, either genuine or cloned, whatever takes your fancy. And we can see it has a topology here. So it's showing a fault in that... Uh, and that module there, what is that? Integrated audio module. And uh, that gives us loads of information of component location, what it does, all that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's a good bit in this, it definitely is. But it's, well, I've mucked about with it here for half an hour. Uh, it's not the most uh, counterintuitive, but th there is a lot in it from what I can see. So, yeah. Okay. What's this? Fault trace. So there's our faults. Hopefully you can make that out. BCM, invalid data received from engine control module. Let's see, hold on, this will stay it. Oh yes. You see that one there, mass or volume error circuit range performance. I set that just to you know make sure I was gonna get the uh, faults. So you can see the, the amber, the red, and the, and the green, and the topology, and there's a key for that. Green, no TTC present. Red, DTC is found. Blah, 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 you know. So, again, I've set this one here deliberately. So we we'll double click on it. It's gonna give us a bit of information on uh, what the crack is with it, possible causes and all that jazz. Okay, so, I'll have to clear these here, so it took me a while to figure this out, but uh, if I click on delivery here, and uh, highlight whatever it is, and down there there's uh, arrays and read and all that, carry on. So we're gonna erase them. If we wish, let's see. Let me see if there's uh, anything else interesting. So let me see now, I've clicked in the, click back in the network there, and uh, we'll select central electric module. So you select any one of these here, and uh, I think the, the grayed out ones, it hasn't got it, or it's not communicating with it. So, what does that say in the information? Gray, control, mo control module not part of the field configuration. Okay. So, central electric module, just for it off. And there's these design and function, component and location, blah, 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 specifications, other. So, description of activation, parameters. So, you can do bidirectional tests on it. Well, that's just descriptions there. But now, as I said, this isn't, you know, 
to do software updates and stuff, you need to connect to the uh, the official software, you know, uh, which you need to pay for. But there's a lot of information in this thing that uh, tells you, uh, you know, specifications and stuff, component specifications. Let me see. So it says fuel level sensor resistances and stuff. It's just a matter of hooking through it and finding it all. To be honest with you. Mm. So let me see if we're going to vehicle communication and select what module we want. There's ECM. Yeah. And uh, in here, parameters, activations, and advanced. So we're going to central electric module, electronic module. Uh, let me see, activations, steer lighting. So there's activations there. Uh, I'll scroll this down a bit. Ah, yeah, see more. Central lock, un unlock, unlock boot lid tailgate. Start. Yeah. So a bit of better action control. Advanced. Battery monitoring sensor. So there's a lot of live data as well. Click on that. Tells you a bit about it. And there's a wee bit of graphing. Okay. Go back to our fault trace there again. So we'll just double click on that. Mass, uh, the math code that I sent. So it's giving you uh, possibilities there. And uh, telling you a wee bit about it. Let me see, details. All right, so there's quite a bit of information there on the uh, freeze frame there. And the timeline tells you when that occurred. So yeah, that was, that was me that said that. Uh, Mucking about with it. So, okay, um, let me see. Apart from the diagnostic side of it, information, we have, uh, if we go into the vehicle profile again, let me see. Hold on a minute. All right, hold on. We're going to repair service programs. So, that's all this. Ah, yeah, so there's there's sort of repair uh, instructions in it for various things. And there's a parts catalog. So let me see. Alternator. Just for it off here. So there we go. So we're in that design and function. It is a wee bit basic, some of it, but it does give you, uh, it does say some, uh, you know, test values, uh, specifics, and stuff like that. Well, there's suspension steer in general. Tightening torques. Yeah. So there we go, we'll go back on the diagnostics again. And I'll erase all those DTCs that I've sent. So anyway, this is a Volvo Vita without a DICE interface. That's the point of this video. So, um, 
that's really it. It's up to yourself how you want to use this uh, software or not. And again, there's there's sellers on on Google there. You just Google it and see what you can come up with. I've bought this software, but it's not it's not very expensive, you know. And uh, we'll do an R scan just to see if those faults have cleared. So that's it. Maybe another use for your J twenty five thirty four that you get with uh, if you have a Maxi C or whatever it is. You know, you need Windows 7 Professional. Uh, that's the only caveat with this. Oh yes, the other thing is, it'll only do up to, it, it's, this is old stuff here, so it only does up to like 2014 or 2015 or something. 2016, 17, and one, um, you know, Volvo has uh, went to a different protocol. Yeah, so I'll take up a wee bit of information on that. There's there. So Ethernet, DOIP, uh, Diagnostic Over Internet Protocol, uses Ethernet for diagnostic messages, which communicates with a the vehicle. Uh, there we go. So Jaguar uh, from 2019, Land Rover's 2018 and year, there's their listed. And then the Volvo's XC90s, 2016 and uh, year, and then the rest of the range there as well is all all using DOIP so clearly this won't do that the J2534 won't do it either so there we go so yeah for those different protocols then you know clearly this isn't going to be any good but it's still you know you don't you don't have to connect it to a vehicle to uh, look at you know all the information that's that's there that's in in there so the you know the repair catalogs and stuff service programs overhaul instructions uh, I'm just picking stuff out of the blue here. Let's, let's see now. What's all that? Oh yeah, right. There's how to replace the spring. Okay, maybe you got something out of it. Thanks very much for watching. As ever, all the best. I'm yeah.